And we're back. This is Drew and D's background noise, a place where you can pretty much say whatever you want because we can't hear you, and uh, we'll say whatever we want because we're background noise. Yeah, and we don't care what you say back because we can't hear you either. <laughs> That's what I just said. Fuck me. And. Anyway, we're background on, so you won't even notice that I just fucked up like that. That's so, the best part so of it. It's like keep, keep going. That's I good. really do feel free. It's like, yeah, we're putting shit out there, and I've even said things that I'm like, God, that's kind of embarrassing. But it's like, who cares? <laughs> we have what three listeners now? Four. Four. Holy shit! But we have like sixty followers. Four listeners. I no, no, you know what? I think that's a good turnout. Four people out of sixty. That's not bad because they say in advertisement, for every hundred flyers you put out, you only get five people back. We got four with sixty. Okay. That's not bad odds, but we don't even have a flyer. We've, we've done some some YouTube commercials, and I've looked, gone back and looked at them, like not actually watched them, but just looked to check, and some of them hit like into like the two hundreds and stuff. The two hundred? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's not like super huge, but it's it's something. It's it's a good beginning, and we've only done what like twenty. This will be twenty. This is number twenty, yeah. Yeah, number twenty. All right. Number twenty, yeah. We're gonna do anything special? We're no longer teenagers. <laughs> All right, twenty. Full blown growth. Yeah. Now Full we know everything. Now. We know everything in the world now. Yeah. We're oh. we're smart and better. And everything's. I'll fucking die for that shit. Yeah. I die for that shit, dude. Cocoa puffs. Fucking die for that right now. Hey, but you won't get any cocoa puffs. I know, but I but I die for it. Yeah. So you'll be dead you won't get to yeah but everyone else will puffs. get to eat cocoa puffs because i died for cocoa puffs why would you care about everybody else having cocoa puffs when you're dead because have you ever like fuck everybody else when you're dead but yeah but if you have you ever like smoked a ball and ate some cocoa puffs no it's amazing okay everyone should experience it that's you, why that's why you know like everybody should experience it at least twice because the first time something bad might happen but the second time it might go smooth. <laughs> you know, I don't know why, but it reminded me of this saying my dad used to say. I'm a, he didn't. Ma- I don't think he made it up or anything, but he used to say it a lot, especially because you know, when you you're going through the changes of being a kid and going from like preteen to teen and stuff, you definitely do some experiments with, with fashion, with your hair and like clothing and shit, and so. How my dad would handle things when I would, you know, do something that he didn't agree with or thought was weird or dumb. He'd just be like, oh, yeah, that's great. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, you like it? He's like, yeah. He's like, I want two of them. One to shit on, one to cover it up with. (laughs) Awesome. Uh, Oh, man, bless that man. My dad's a funny guy. I don't think I've ever met your dad. Yeah, dude. He, he now that he's older, he's he's not that much. And, and now that he's he's gotten back with my mom, he's, his spirit's kind of broken. <laughs> he's dead inside. <laughs> they were divorced for seventeen years and got back together like three years ago. Oh man! They were divorced for a reason. <laughs> That's what I told well, it's usually is a reason for a divorce. That's why every time they get into a big fight, the funny thing is, is I know how to defuse it. I literally go in my room and get pot. And I grab my mom and I take her out of the room and I make her go in my room and smoke. And then I go in there and I just don't even say nothing. I just hand it to them and they smoke. And they both, you know, stay separated for like 10, 15 minutes and they come back together and it's quiet. And they're like not fine and everything. I walk back in there and I'm just like, hey. And they're both looking at me like, because, you know, they're in a better mood now. I'm just like, 
there's a reason y'all were divorced. And they'll just laugh. <laughs> but it's like, I'm being serious. Like, look, this is not working. You don't even get it. You're getting hustled by your parents. <laughs> <laughs> they, like, give each other. They, like, Fake nod fights each other. for a week. <laughs> She's like, what's your dad's name? Ralph. He's like, Ralph, I'm hurting. All right. We're going to have to. I give you the signal. Just start yelling at me. Come and peace shit. <laughs> But, but the funny thing is, though, is, is like, were you, uh, she's like, I'm going to call you some bitch, <laughs> and I'm going to jump on your back, <laughs> and I'm going to kick around. <laughs> no, they just, they fight because, man, my mom is just this complicated. You, you've you gotten to see my mom in small doses. Like, it's... Nice it, woman. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. You know, she's, she's, she's got her, her, her moments. But my dad, before... She really broke spirit in the divorce. He was a real funny guy, and he was kind of ballsy, and that's something that I always admired about him. It's it's probably a lot of where I get like how I am. Like for instance, you know, just talking to random people that are weird and shit. Mm-hmm. You know, something that you hate that I do that I love to do. But my dad I, I don't was the hate same it. way. I just, I'm just, it's just not me, dude. Man, put it this way: you know how sometimes people just have that charm about them, and they can get away with saying and doing certain things to just about anyone, and and you know, like like. Put it this way. Kind of like me with white people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, if I were to say something, like, really weird, people would look at me like I was a creep, you know? But my dad had this charm about him to where we could go to the Irving Mall. And, and mind you, this is like 1998, 99. <laughs> and walk around, and he would stop adults and go, hey, go like this. And he would make, like, an, a circle with his mouth. And then they would go like that. that. I don't know why, but they would follow it and they would do it. And he'd go, butthole. And then walk off. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is my dad was such an awesome dad that he would see that that cracked me up as a kid. So he would do it for me. Like, I'd like you know, and like, not many kids have a dad where I can be like, hey, dad, go do the butthole thing. You know, he'd be like, okay, okay. He'd like, walk up to someone like, hey, hey, go like this. Don't do it with the butthole. <laughs> That's cool, man. He used to we go to the movie theaters, and he would make retard noises, and just really like, yeah, like that. And then people would look around, and he he'd kind of look over at me like he was mad at me. You know, before the lights dim and stuff, and they start playing the previews. And then when the previews would start, he would throw popcorn at other people and get on to me. And I would fucking just try not to laugh because I would be so scared that the other people would beat us up. And my dad, like, <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, I remember one time, dude, and this is, I wasn't even young then. This is when I was 15. We were watching the remake to The Exorcist. And they had, you know, redone it and added scenes and CGI and, and put it back in theaters. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we went to go see it because my dad's a big horror fan. And so we're watching <laughs> And this is when, like, he wasn't, he kind of knew, you know, I was smoking and stuff. But he he wasn't, like, really, like you know heavy into my life just yet about that side like the weed side and stuff but he had an idea but he knew that i i knew that he smoked and so he was like i'm gonna smoke before we went and i remember he he had this shit that he had gotten from his his friend brett and he he, i remember he well he wanted to even tell me and this is back before even dro was really everywhere and i don't think it was dro i never got to look at it or anything but he said that his friend called it the shit that killed elvis and that was the, like the name of the weed, I guess. And he smoked it, and he was so fucking baked. Like, he was just baked. And I remember him just being in a goofy mood, because, you know, that was my dad, just a goofball. And we were having a good time. And he, I didn't think he would do anything, because it had been a long time since he had made, you know, any crazy things like that in theater, because I wasn't a kid no more. You know, we were a little bit older, you know. Right. And we're sitting there, and the movie's about to start, and he grabs a handful of popcorn. Like, I mean, a giant handful, and just flings it over the ground. Like, it rains fucking popcorn all over everyone. And they look back, and I shit you not, my dad goes, Sorry, sorry, it's my son. He's got MS. He's got MS. I'm so sorry. And everyone just, like, literally just, like, let it go. And it was like the greatest moment in my life. And the I always remember because I kind of forgot that he did it by the end of the movie. And he's looking, he's like, hey, look, he's like, if you want to avoid any fights when we leave here, you should probably like walk with a wobbly leg. (laughs) 
Oh, that's fucked up, man. <laughs> so I did it. <laughs> and anyway, it. But it was more of like I wanted to do it because that's hilarious. And like we had a good time cracking up the whole way. And I'm like walking with this like weird limp and making my arm do this weird thing. And everyone's just like trying to pretend like they can't see me. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Casey, baby. <laughs> and I know that's terrible. And, and to anyone who has MS, I get it. Like, it's not nothing to make fun of, but it's like, hey, I got caught up. Oh, fuck I had you. to follow through. No, fuck you. If you got MS, fuck you if you got butt hurt behind that. Because y'all say y'all want to be treated like everybody else, and we point out the obvious about everybody else. And so, yes, your MS is funny. It's not funny to you. Like, it's not funny, like, haha, you're a shitty person. And you deserve to have MS. It's funny, and even you know it's funny. That's why you're self-conscious about the shit. Because if you didn't have it, you laugh at somebody else that had it. So, fuck your ass. That's the way I say it. Fuck them. <laughs> I say fuck everybody else, so fuck people with their ass. You know what they'd say to you? Hmm. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> like the kid from <laughs> Breaking Bad. Yeah. You, you know my dad. I'm so mad at you. I'd have knocked his ass down. <laughs> Kick his crutches out from under him. I couldn't have a kid that had some kind of debilitating problem like that. Now you want to talk shit, motherfucker? What? Bitch, I'll trip you right now, ho. You know what? I think I could, and that's because I'd raise him just to be like really witty and shit, and charming, so everyone would love him. Nah, man, I could, I could. Don't get me wrong. I raised the little, the little crooked motherfucker, but. But look, you go to talk shit like that, like you want to get brave and shit, nigga, I'll knock your crutches down. I don't give a fuck, you know what I'm saying? Fuck you, punk ass kid. You know, speaking of uh, charging up weirdos and, and, you know, stuff like that, I was charged up a crackhead the other day at the tattoo shop in the middle of the road. Because, you know, the, the tattoo shop on Irving Boulevard, it's like, that little side road it's mm. literally connected right to the side road and so i'm pulling in you know getting there a little early and there's this guy and he's walking on the opposite side of the road no big deal slow down just in case he decides he wants to cross over no big deal start to slow down almost to a stop gets in the middle of the road literally just i don't know what he's saying he's he's speaking some kind of language that's unknown to man mm. and he but it, the funny thing is is he was Pretty well dressed for a crazy crackhead. So I'm thinking it was probably one of those things where like sophisticated crackheads. Well, it was about. probably like a guy who has money and like he just decided to go on a binge and it's like mm. day 14 or whatever. Charlie Sheen in it. Yeah, because dude, he had a nice leather jacket on, black jeans, nice looking boots. He was a black dude, but he's really well dressed. But he's sitting he there just like had to say that. Yeah. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> White Illuminati is successful. The Illuminati are white, wet reptiles. We're going to lose about nine minutes worth of uh, audio Footage, right Because I said Illuminati. Yeah. The all-seeing eye is a reptile eye. Every reptile has a third eye. Nice. Okay. Are you happy? Can I get back to my story now? Yeah. I didn't tell okay. you to stop. Well, I just, for some reason, I always feel like you want me to admit that I'm a reptile. It's fucking gay. I'm sorry, but I am. I'm not human. Watch, I can blink my pupils. See? Oh my god. That's awesome, I told you. Yes, it is. I tell you a damn story, man. I forgot what I was even doing. You, distra- see, you distracted see, I didn't, I didn't me. When? When? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You, you were talking about you were saying like fuck people with your mask and then no you, that, that was you and that, then I uh, was talking about charging up a crackhead and then I oh that's right yeah he was yeah. wearing nice clothes and yeah. that he was black and somehow you think it was me being like oh surprise a black guy see, wearing see, nice clothes and on crack like see no, what you did with that see see no you're the one who who threw all this no because loop. I know I threw you. out a quick joke because I know I threw you threw out a quick joke all I said was. Oh, you just had to throw that in there. That's it. And you're like, yes, Illuminati, third eyes. Black people are stupid. Black oh, people are- whoa, whoa, whoa. That never happened. 
That's that's the way I heard it. I mean, I mean, if you have some personal demons you're trying to uh, exercise right now, you know, I I fully suggest you just go on and get it out, man. Because if there's hate in your heart, let it out, you know. But you, I mean, you you don't want to spun the whole thing like that. I was just trying to hear a nice story about a crackhead in the middle of the street with a leather jacket on, but then he started talking to Illuminati. I'm a reptile, third eye. All right, so what happened with this crackhead with the nice little coat? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, back on track. So uh, he was yelling gibberish, swinging his arms, almost like he was like in a Paula Abdul music video. like. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, of course, was like, well, there's no point in trying to get mad or react. So I just sat there and let him throw his little fit. And, of course, eventually he got out of the road. And I kept driving. Well, when I kept dri- started passing him, he got back in the middle of the road, and he pulled something out of his pocket, and he threw it, and it hit my car. And I think it was like a napkin with like a, some change in it or something, because it was like this white thing, and then when it hit, it was like clink, and sounded like change, kind of. Mm-hmm. And so I it stopped and hit on the brakes. I can bust that bitch in reverse, like hit all the way back, fucking turn my car sideways, cause you know that little side road's, you know, small and blocked the whole road. Fucking got out, was like, what the fuck do you want? He started going like that, and he started holding his hands up over his face, and he was like, eh, eh, dude, it wasn't, he never spoke an actual word, and he was just like making like, uh, said, eh, eh, eh. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Go on, get the fuck out of here like that. And he turned around and he just kept walking. And he's like, had this like, kind of like, the only way I can explain it is like, like if you were to give a zombie methamphetamines, <laughs> it's like, kind of like walking, like jerking, like, but at a, like a fast pace. And I walked over there and, and Ma at the shop and Jeff were standing out there. I was like, did that guy give you any problems? Like, yeah, he walked in the, the shop and was trying to talk. He said, Jeff had to do the same thing, run his ass off. She said, the mud. He goes, the mad, <laughs> you know, mom, she was, the mad motherfucker didn't even say a word. <laughs> <laughs> trying to steal. But I also think, too, it's like, what? what did he do? Like, I wish I could find out what exactly was the... The mixture of things that led to that moment. Or was he just naturally crazy, but it's like a certain rarity type of crazy to where, yeah, he's crazy, but he's obsessed with hygiene. You know what I mean? So he like <laughs> clean clothes, takes a bath, or, well shaved. Or he gets off by people yelling at him. <laughs> and he's like, oh, 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 oh coming. And he Almost knows that coming. nobody will fuck with him. He's not making noise. Because I don't know. When I see someone grunting and acting like that, I think... It's it's not like a normal person like that wants to fight me. I'm thinking this motherfucker's gonna be like an animal. He's gonna scratch, bite, chew, spit, piss, like fuck that well, shit. He's on bath salts. Oh man, get your face eaten, fuck that shit. Yep, and you would have been the next victim. Man, bath salts, bad news, man. You do that shit, you ever do that? No, I n- that's one thing I haven't fucking touched. I I know some personal people. Uh, for once, I'm not going to name drop or even really tell the story. Oh, but now. Yeah, dude, because it, it kind of hits close to home, yeah. but They dude, drown a baby. No, no, nothing like that. But it's just, I know for a fact, bath salts can really just fuck your whole brain up. And that's why I'm, I'll never fuck with them. I got lucky and just knew some people close to me that had some shit happen that made me not want to ever fuck with bath salts. I would put some in... Some Earl Grey tea every now and then. It's like a little bit instead of sugar. I put it, <laughs> Just drink it and then, you know, eat the neighborhood dogs and fucking rape a few innocent people, men and women. It's a NASA. That way, whenever I run into that girl from band again. <laughs> <laughs> like, what you been doing with your life? Oh, I became a successful, you know, executive and I'm this, that, and I was like, yeah, you know what I did over the weekend. I was just... Drink a little bath salt and fucking ate a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking some bath salts, munching on baby parts. Like, not, you know, nothing spectacular, you know. I punched a giraffe. <laughs> Got kicked out of the zoo for that. <laughs> that bitch. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. But anyway, oh, there I go. 
Anyway. There you go. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I'd rather do that. I'd rather say, okay, okay, okay. I would rather do I'll that. always remember that from the Pop Brown Animals. <laughs> it's like stuck on a loop. You're just like a kid, like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> that was so much fun, man. That was so, so much fun. I'm, I'm sold on uh, edibles now. It's an amazing thing. It is, man. Like, I think the world would be a better place if people did more edibles. We'd laugh at a lot more, at a lot more stuff, you know. We'd all be a lot, it'd be a lot cooler if we did. <laughs> it'd be cooler if we did. I'm just gonna not wear deodorant, take off my shirt. And- oh, speaking of deodorant, <laughs> speaking of deodorant, man. Okay, so today I didn't go to work. Okay, but I wasn't like laying around the house. I was not laying around the house. I was at the fucking license place all day trying to get my license renewed. Right? I believe you. So I went there. I get I get in the line, you know, to get the form and all that shit. Man, how the fuck do I get stuck between three Africans and they're all the kind that don't believe in using deodorant? Man, they stink, man. Like, stink. And then, I go through all that shit just to get, to fill out the paperwork, wait all that time to get up there to, to, to do this shit. And like, oh, we can't do it. There's a hold on you. I'm like, whoa, for what? And they're like, failure to appear. It's some extra fucking charge that they just threw up over some tickets I had last year that I thought I'd pay for it. I always pay my shit up. And so, like, they're like, Oh, it's $134, call this. So I called the thing. So I had to go down to Dallas County to the, you know, to pay for the shit, right? They said it's $134.10 on the thing. I get So I go to my bank, make a money order for $134.10. Oh, God. Go to Dallas County to pay for the shit, right? And the girl looks, she goes, oh, yeah, that'd be $174. And I'm like, whoa, I said, the thing says 134.10. Right there, it says it right there. She goes, yeah, that's their price. Their price is different than ours. Like, yeah, that's what they put out. Like, they charge me an extra 40 bucks. So what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Right. I mean, really, what am I going to do? Like, fuck you, bitch, <clears throat> and your bulletproof glass that you're <laughs> between. I'm going to snap slap the shit out of you. It's, you know what I'm saying? It was like, I said, fuck it. It's I was like, here you go. Bullshit. I went ahead and just paid the shit. Then, then, okay, here's the kicker. So I handed my credit card, right? She runs and shit. She goes, oh, you got your idea? It's like, yep, but it's expired. And the reason it's expired is because I couldn't get it renewed because of that right there. The thing I'm paying right now. It says, so it's expired. So don't get mad at me. Get mad at y'all that it got expired if you can't take my payment. Yes. Yeah. So I give it to her. It's like, nah, it's cool. She gives it back. Gives me a receipt. Oh, it's going to take five to seven business days before I post. What the fuck? I'm like, I said, whoa. Five to seven business days. She's like, yeah. I was like, my license went out last month. Like, you know, like, well, that's just the way it is. It's like, but I was calm. I was just calm. But I was like, <laughs> what, like what am I going to do? Okay, like, cool. really? What are you really going to do? Can't act a fool or you won't get your license. Well, that and you're already in the fucking court building. There's all kinds of fucking cops and shit around. And it's not even that I'm scared of that. It's just like, I'm just thinking like for once in my life, it's like, what are you going to do? What, what is throwing a fit really going to do for exactly. you? Exactly. That's when that's called just, you know, you're a full adult. You're just like, you don't see a point. And like, when you're younger, you got all that testosterone pumping like, hey, you, you're just... So you're so desperate to prove yourself to everyone, and then yeah. and and some people stay that way all the way till they're old it's and die. It all the time. But some people just snap out of it and just say, you know, it's no point. I just really want to get this shit done so I can move on with my life, and this is apparently the only way I can do it. And and I guess this too is it's kind of a thing. It it is a little bit self defeating to everyone because yeah. because you kind of realize okay everybody's gonna get fucked. And sometimes you gotta take a little bit more fucking <laughs> than other times, you know. So it's just hey, we're all whores in our own way. I mean, it just is what it is. But yeah, man, that, that's what I had to do all day. 
But I had to stay in between stinky Africans with no deodorant. And then, uh, okay, look, so when I go to the bank, right, to get the money order, I get out and I see, I see this Crown Victoria, you know, sitting over by the bushes. I look over, there's some black guys sitting on the car. You know, one of them had a bald head and an earring. <laughs> so he's like a black Mr. Clean? So, now he's just, you know, one of those, you know, rappy thuggy guys, you know. Now, nah, anyway, I, I noticed these niggas sitting on the curb, right? <laughs> and I look, and I thought I saw them holding money, right? I'm like, I know these niggas ain't stealing money at the bank and just sitting on the curb, you know? Like, so I go and I do my shit, and I come out. These niggas are still out there, right? And I hear them snapping. And they're holding all this money, and I look, these motherfuckers are shooting craps right there in the fucking parking lot of Wells Fargo. Like, like it's nothing. And I'm talking about, like, they must like just cash their checks or something. Like it's like a bunch of money, right? And I'm like, hey, nigga, this is like a, like this, this, this. It's not like this ain't like South Dallas or like you know like the hood. It's not Dalworth. It's not fucking you know South Irving behind the tattoo shop or anything like yeah. that. This is like you know like on the main strip and it's like what the fuck are you doing? Like, I know there's a lot of Mexicans over here, but we have a nice number of white people to come through here too. Okay. Don't fuck it up for us. They might be hustling, you know, sitting in in the parking lot trying to get people to play with them. I think they lock their keys in their car because by the time I get to my truck, these Mexican dudes pull up in another Crown Victoria with, you know, fucking 93-inch rims on there. And they get out and they're talking. One of them starts, gets in on the crap game and the other one is uh got the coat hanging there to unlock the, the oh, door okay. to other cars. I think they were just waiting for a friend. But it's like, Okay, I understand y'all y'all got a little happy. Like, nigga, we got our check, nigga, we got paid, nigga, let's go on here, can I check, nigga? And you fuck around, let your keys in the car. But you can't start playing crafts outside with your paycheck, you just cash, man. Oh, wow. You know, that's that's just some that's perpetuating the nigga uh mentality, you know what I'm saying? What do you mean? I play craps with some people. No, I'm not I didn't say you can't play crafts. No. <laughs> no, in the parking lot in the middle of nowhere. I don't in the parking lot in front of millions of people. I don't care. That's a fun game. If you can win some money. But that's the thing though, it's illegal, man. Yeah, the cops don't give a shit about that stuff. Look, man. Do we shoot crap look, at, in high school? Dog, dog. We used to the roll police. 7-Eleven in fucking the choir room. Like nobody gives a shit. The police these days. The po and I ain't saying this is a racial thing either. But the police these days are looking for any and every reason to shoot a motherfucker doing anything slightly wrong. And you know that's yeah, true. I can't argue with that here lately. That's like the, crazy. The, did you hear about the kid who got shot because he was standing next to a kid with a toy gun? I'm not, I didn't make any of that up just Holy now. Holy shit. Or that 17-year-old girl who got shot in the police station. That no one, weapons. Look, look. Fuck that one. This kid... Got shot for standing next to another kid holding a toy gun. Not the kid with the toy gun got shot, which is... Oh, so the kid kid. with the gun didn't even get shot? No! Oh, my God! (laughs) It's like, oh, oh, uh, that one's blacker! (laughs) What the the fuck, cops? Seriously, what the fuck? That's what I'm saying. And these niggas... (laughs) And these niggas with gold teeth and... And they're in their white t-shirts, and they're they're blinging earring. Just gonna start playing craps in the middle of Wells Fargo. Well, obviously they have a job though. Wife. If they're cashing checks, it's still against the law to play craps. Yeah, but then you're making them out to be like Dougie. Doug, the, the, get a job. No, that, that's he's got a job, man. No, see, that's bad. That's that's how you know I'm getting old. Cause I'm like, exactly. You're giving them what they want. They already see you as a hoodlum. I done turned Bill Cosby on the ass to see. Like, come on, nigga, don't. My whole thing is like, don't play crabs right there in front of all these people. You know what I'm saying? Like, go go behind Wells Fargo and play. There, there's other places. I mean, I man. get it. I get it because it's illegal. But also at the same time, I kind of understand where it comes from. It's a, it's a social thing. It's not it's not it's, me judging them. It's a social thing. I get like, it. But because I'm in I the same it. parking lot and and the way it's going, I I was not near them, but they'll pull up like, ah. Oh, Oh, he's got more tattoos in them. You see what I'm saying? 
All I'm saying is, is I get what you're saying. I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared. I understand what you're saying. I really do, and I know where you're coming from. But I understand where I'm coming from. Like to me, that you, when you break it down, like it's so it's such a petty thing to really even get worked up about for anyone, anyone. And I get it through society and the way the rules are and stuff. Like it will draw attention. It, it, you could possibly get in trouble. But that to me is bullshit. And I support the right to fucking do that shit because you know what they were doing in reality. I'm not saying hold what they're doing is wrong. Hold on, hold on. I'm not saying that but, at all. But when you when you take down the barrier, you take away the law and everything. And you, doing hold on, hold on. You take away their image, take away the law, take away you know all that shit. Just they were living freely. I will admit. Listen, listen. Maybe I'm jealous. Listen. <laughs> let me finish. So Fuck you, them. You take all that shit away. I hate you, them. You, <laughs> All they were doing is taking these two cube-shaped plastic things and fucking rolling them to see what numbers they land on to add up to see if they win. What's the big fucking deal, really? For money, big deal. I understand. That's not a big deal. I'm saying that's how I know I'm getting old because I'm like, y'all niggas know damn well y'all shouldn't be doing that. Get your ass behind that Krispy Kreme over there. Don't, don't be doing that shit right here. I'm, I'm, I'm becoming that old man. Like, gone out of here, you know? Yeah, you're coming grumpy. That's yeah, how I'm, I'm getting on you. I'm just like, what the fuck, dude? I'm sorry, man. Look, that's that fucking money away. Piece of shit. I gotta go put that back in my fucking... Yeah. I, I'm getting old, man. You are. I, and and I, I'm fucking responsible. It's scary. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm I'm getting mad at young niggas playing craps in the Wells Fargo parking lot. Um, I, man, okay. And then I run to this kid that I know at the DPS, right? I knew him from the church days and all that. He's 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 an alright kid, right? Anyway, he's like, "Yo, what's up?" And I I'm sitting there filling my paperwork. I hear D, D. You know, it, it's in Duncanville, so you know, I was like. I'm, I'm not even close to being the only Negro in that room. I'm just uh, one in the sea of many. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm sitting there filling it out. I hear D, D. And I'm looking around. Out, out of just quick sight, look around. I don't recognize anybody. So, I'm just like, nah. It's, it's, it could be so many fucking people in here. Like It's like yelling Juan at, you know, Mercado Juarez or some shit, yeah. right? So, I finally look up. And I recognize kids like, oh, I am that D. Yeah, I am that D. That'd be me. <laughs> but nah, so we start talking and he's like, yo, man. Yeah, nigga, I got this Grand Vic. You know what I'm saying? Got the 22s on that bitch. You know I said, yeah. And he's like, I just go, I scope this excursion, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Trick that motherfucker out. You know, I'm flipping him, dude. I said, yeah. So I said, look, man, check this out. I said, He's like, man, you want to get a car? Like, no, nah, I'm cool, man. I was like, my shit's paid for. He's like, I feel you, dog. Yeah, hell yeah, I feel you. You know, I'm like, I'm like, nah, I said, I could get some new shit. If I wanted to, it was like, but why? I already got this, you know, it works. What's the point of, you know, you know, going too far with it? And I was like, I said, look, them realm things? I was like, I don't even fuck with realms. I'm like, I'm like, look, y'all niggas, I said, y'all always think that shit's real cool. I said, I get it. You know, I was young once, too. I was like, but really? I said, you put this shit on your car, all you're doing is adding more miles to your car because the fucking rims are bigger. I said, you're going through brake pads like like there's no tomorrow. I said, tires, flats, all that shit. He's like, yeah, nigga, you know what? You're right, man. You're right. And I'm like, yeah. I said, you know, I said, don't get it twisted. I said, motherfuckers throw some shit on that car and like, yeah, nigga, my shit is valuable. Nigga, I don't want nobody to fuck with my shit. Put the alarm system, nigga. You know what I'm saying? You know, my shit's tight, dog. Anybody gonna fuck with my car? If they gonna fuck with any car in this parking lot, it's gonna be my car. It's like, I said, look, man. Y'all think that shit makes your car valuable. It decreases the value of your car. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so really, you got everything in reverse. What you think is... Yeah, you're adding all that stuff and in reality. Because if you look, when people finally sell those things, you always see it. And it's like nine grand. It'll be a brand new car equipped with everything. You're like, God damn, it's because nobody wants that shit. Well, I mean, they, 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 
they they can be appealing like to the look, you know. What I'm yeah, saying? But, and the concept, okay, oh, that's cool. But maintenance and everything else, yeah, like, you know, and it's uh, um, I can see, I can see that I actually kind of broke through to him because like, yeah, you know what, you're probably right. He's like, he said, even the guys at the rim shop that were putting it on were telling me the same thing. He goes, you know what? I think I'm just gonna give those rims to my girl. And I'm gonna put some stars back on there. I say, no, I think that's a good move. You know what I'm saying? That's like one of them, like, you know, like I'm teaching. And then moments. you hear, Ba-da-da. and then y'all hugged, right? No, and the crazy, <laughs> the, the crazy part is he knew me when I was a preacher. And I would talk to the kids all the time. So he really, so he right, and it's weird because like here I'm not preaching, like not even close to being preaching no more. I'm, I'm probably more fucked in the head than he is at this point, you know. And he's just like, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah. And that's the way it was when I used to be a preacher with them. I, you know, dog. I just break shit down to him. Like, Look, I just want to say thank you. You know, you was a preacher and shit. And you preach yeah. God in my ear and shit. And you never once tried to touch my dick. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he was like, he was even like, uh, yeah, man, uh, the church moved, man. Like, he should come out and check it out. He's like, still gone? Damn. I said, Look, man. I said, I don't really do the church thing no more. He goes, nah, it be like that sometimes, dog. I feel you. I feel you. You know? Nah, he's like, he's the grandson of the pastor of the church. Whoa. You know? He's a cool kid, dog, man. I actually got along with now, the what grandkids. is it about pastors and preachers' kids that are so bad? But you know what? The, their parents are, their parents aren't bad. They, they were, I knew their parents, too. So I actually know these people, even kind of outside the church. I knew these people. But uh, the parents weren't so bad. They kind of grew up in, like, Cedar Hill, DeSoto area before. This is, like, back in the before 80s. Before it was real bad. Back in the 80s when they were first building houses out there. And they, they always lived, like, in a nice house type of thing. And, uh, like the Well, Cedar Hill's kind of, like, upper middle class ghetto. Yeah, well, well, now it is. But back then it was... It was actually more white people out there. Hmm. And then, um, but their family always lived upper middle class. And so, like, like the dad was, like, a, a police sergeant for Dallas for, like, 25 years. And the mom was, like, had a long career at the police department, too, and all that. So, so they, they had a little money. They didn't, they didn't, like, filthy rich or nothing yeah. like that. But, they, you know, they were Living not hurt good. by any means. You know, but the kids were kind of a little bit more... The, the the actual kids, uh, the the that dude's mom and all the the siblings and all they were a little older than me, and they were like even babysitting me when I was a kid and shit. But they were a little bit more uh, suburbanized. Just they were like not even you couldn't even call them blackish. You know what I'm saying? They still had a little bit of nigger to them. You know what yeah. I mean? But uh, they were just black people. They weren't niggas. They were just black people. Now these kids, them niggas. Like the new, like these grandkids, they them, them niggas, man. <laughs> you know? And all it is, a lot of it is, uh, it's these motherfuckers that are, they think that, oh, just because I'm black and uh, there's a lot of us around, we could just act hood and shit, but they're, they're, they're not living bad lives. Yeah. They live in these, you know, nice middle class, you know, lives, they're fucking houses. Quarter million, three hundred thousand dollars, half a million. Sometimes you know they got a fucking pool and pool table upstairs. They got like a whole upstairs to themselves. You know, like it's like this total like. Uh, and they yeah, nigga, you know what I'm saying? We keep it real in this motherfucker, man. You know, nigga, we got tattooed tears. You know, tattooed on us and shit, nigga. This is uh, this is the five seven three nine twelve. 87 gang like yo and like where'd you get that from that was my locker combination this school it's like you, you walk in their house hey yo yo whoa chill chill dog this is indonesian leather you sit down slowly this was imported <laughs> and see and the crazy part is you see like, like pictures of him with like glasses and like all over the world and stuff <laughs> and the crazy part is like the it would be you remember uh trading places Eddie Murphy, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. You remember when uh, Eddie Murphy was throwing that party, 
And everybody's like just dancing in the house, like, hey, 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 you ever hear coasters? And then um, he looks down, he's like, he picks up a cigarette, he's like, who been putting out their cools on my floor? <laughs> That's always one of my favorite, like, who been putting out their cools on my floor? <laughs> That's like the grandparents, you know, because they're the ones that actually came from yeah. poverty and made it up. They, who are we putting it? The, but the grandkids, they're the ones dancing around partying. Just, I can, you know, yeah, yeah, you know. And see, you know, it's just, you know, it's like a fad, you know. It's cool, it's cool to be that way. And, you know, and, you know, as much as I hate to say it because it does sound like, you know, fucking shit, but it's like music really does influence a lot of it, like, no, it does. It was the culture, but the crazy Music, part of a little, you know, television. Yeah, you know, but if you would, if, if they were to take most of those kids and say, take you, you know what I'm saying? Not you now, yeah, but you at the same age as them, right? You took them and you you just went by just pure look and everything else. They would think people would think that they were the ones who grew up next to West Dallas, who was running around hustling in the hood, uh-huh. you know, like. You know, like, you know, more poor, you know what I'm saying? Like, living more rough, actually doing some shit. No. And they would have thought, like, oh, he's just a spoiled white kid who, you know, he just likes to get stoned and shit. You know, look at him. You know, fucking loser. You know, type of thing. And it's really the opposite. You're really the the hood motherfucker and they're the fucking spoiled fucking stoner kid. I've done some fucked up shit. And and as crazy as that is, like, it's the truth. You're way more... You're way more hood, more gully, more real son than they are. You know what I mean? You know, I try not. The funny thing is, is with the age, I definitely try to sound more proper. You know, I'm proud of myself because, believe it or not, I literally had to train myself to speak properly. Especially when I started getting more advanced, like moving up (coughs) in head shops and having to do like more talking and mingling mm-hmm. and like dealing with like online vendors like have to call them and talk to them and stuff you know what i mean so you yeah. have to learn how to speak proper and right, and i right. do now perfectly but it was really a learning experience because you know what growing up there right on the edge of irving right by singleton and like every all the kids from west dallas went to all the irving schools and stuff when it was overcrowded you know and it's just you just hang around with all these kids and it's like all your friends, like, all my friends' parents were dealers, like, you know, mm. for the most part, like, and or either that or they were just, like, really hardworking and never paid attention to their kid or gave their kids rules or anything so their kids could do whatever they fucking wanted. Right. And so I was always just used to talking that way, acting that way, having that mind frame. Still to this day, I think even you kind of got to do it. Like, I'll fucking start breaking up weed and fucking light up a joint. People are like, what the fuck you do? Other people are like, oh, sorry, sorry. I'm used to not giving a <laughs> shit. Like, because you're, when you're in Irving, you know, there's certain parts you do, you definitely got to watch out for. You can't act that way when you're getting closer to Los Colinas and stuff. Mm-hmm. But you you know, when you're right there by the tattoo shop, shit, we stand right in front of that bitch and smoke weed all day long way, but cops while they roll by, they don't give a shit. Yeah. You know, and, but yeah. it's like, you know, but you go to Ulysses, you better not even try to fucking smoke a bowl in your car. Like, cops... They'll fucking smell that shit from five miles away. They'll be like, "What the fuck's going on here?" And and no and but nah, yeah, that's the truth, man. Like, but see, I never even acted like. You never heard me holler about like, "Oh yeah, nigga, I'm from the hood. I'm from the hood. I'm not." You know what I'm saying? I mean, I grew up in. Some, I didn't grow up in like nice areas. But Irving, I didn't. But I didn't grow up in horrible areas either. Irving's not really hood though. But at the same time, though, no, like. You know, like, you had to get down. You know, I was like, I was like, I was, this is what I like to call myself. Not lower middle class. I was upper lower class. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was one of those things, you know. And, uh, you know, you know how it is, man. Like, but like these kids, these are little pampered little fuckers and shit. And they just, yeah, nigga. And then I'm like, no, nah, nigga. No, the little Kanye Wests and shit running around like, yeah, yeah, man, little soldier boy type motherfuckers and shit. 
And you know what? Their whole life is like an Instagram picture and shit. Like, they live for those picture moments. And they, they live for that, like, post, like, where it's like, you know, the same fucking post you always see. It's like they're they're wearing their, like, baseball jersey. And then their girlfriend's wearing, like, a tight shirt and short shirt. And they're both hugging each other. And they got, like, a blunt. And, like, their weed all laid out in front of them. Like, look what we have. Like, only the best for us, bae. B-A-E. And then it's yeah. like they snap a picture of each other. And it's like... And it's like it's it's like carbon fucking copiers. They're they're making carbon copies of the same shit. Like everyone's everyone's doing the exact same thing and all claiming like they're original. And and that's why I love Einstein. I think I've said it before on the podcast, but you know, Einstein says, you know, originality you know, being original is being able to hide your sources very well, you know. Basically saying true, there's no true. such thing as originality. Like, that's true. I admit that. Look, I admit that like a motherfucker, like even like like the movie we've been working on and shit. I don't sit up and try to act like like oh yeah, I totally came up with this concept like totally all by myself and like there's absolutely no inspiration. You were inspired. I just I just spit it up, you know. Like I I don't even front like the one part that that we filmed like even with you. Yes, it's very much influenced by Silence of the Lambs. You know what I'm saying? I don't even sit up and act like yeah. it's not. You know what I mean? Like. I mean, it's, there really isn't a lot. I even had this working theory about horror movies in general. And um, if you go, if you really look at it, I think there's, was it, five movies that every horror, every horror movie is like basically mimicking. It's going to mimic one of the five. It's going to be Psycho. Uh-huh. Uh, Okay, Psycho, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, for sure. Okay, uh, Halloween. Friday the 13th. Friday, the, no, no, no. Because even that mimics, in a way that mimics uh, uh, Psycho and and uh, Halloween. Yeah, I guess so. Cause and Texas the, Chainsaw Massacre. The mom thing. Yeah, you're right. Damn, yeah. Look at you know your shit, son. And then... Uh, Believe it or not, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Because the whole, like, get you in your dream type of thing. Even though that's supernatural, I mean, you had to go into the dream uh, type of thing. I think there was maybe one more. I can't think of it right off the top of my head right now. But but pretty much every fucking um, horror no, movie. Dawn of the Dead. Yo, that's, I'm sorry. Night of the Living Dead. Night of the Living Dead. I'm there sorry. we go. It wasn't Dawn of the I'm Dead. I'm so sorry. That's actually... Yeah, the 1960 believe version. Me, believe it or not, that's actually number one on my list. Because every zombie movie after that it is mimicking that in some type of way. You know... Uh, some type of way. And the, the reason I say after that is because that was the one who set the premise for the modern day zombie movie. There were other zombie movies before that, but they were more the... The voodoo ritual zombie, and yeah, like you know. painted pale faces, no yeah. rotting flesh, like just slow walking, like <coughs> brain. But, no, but what's what's crazy though is you take away the brains part, but the slow walking, the uh, you know, like basically brain dead, but like the whole zombie movement, and everything has actually more accurate to the real deal, where they even got all the ideas from. It's 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 actually true. You well, know yeah. what I'm saying? There, are, there really are zombies, it's, but they're not like dead and then they came yeah, back to life. Yeah, I actually was read this interesting article about a woman in, uh, I think it was Jamaica. Or was it Haiti? Because it, because in Haiti is where every, it, it all could, originated. It could have been. But e- either way, she basically, this is it, when they discovered zombies basically were around, is this. And the reason why zombies talk like that is because what she would do is she would... You hear that? Yeah, I do. It's your phone. That was weird. Okay, go ahead. It was a zombie. But uh, she, she would, you know, lure men in to her house and then she'd dope them up mm-hmm. and fucking cut their tongues out so they couldn't talk. And she would keep them dope in there. I can't remember. There's a certain type of drug. It's like this root or plant that you use. Mm-hmm. And it basically puts you in this zombified state to where you you don't really 
know what's going on or what to do, but you can be given simple orders and follow through. Yeah. And she had them working on her farm. Yeah. Doing right. simple things and just mm-hmm. keeping them all doped up. Well, one of them, I guess, had managed to snap out of it a little bit, like, mm-hmm. I guess, out of the drug, and had wandered off and scared a nearby village. They thought he was dead. Yeah, because he, he looked, you know, because, of course, he wasn't eating right or anything. He's been on drugs for God knows how long and mm-hmm. no tongue in his mouth, you know, just like a nub. And he's just walking up, like, all slow, like, <laughs> Watch the movie Serpent and the Rainbow. And that's actually very accurate to what it really came from. But like, yeah, it would these voodoo priests would be able they would give you this plant, they would extract certain chemicals in it and then give it to you, right? Yeah. To the person that they want to do this to. And what would happen is is they would appear dead. And they would make it to where their heartbeat would only beat. Oh yeah, and then they go back and take the body. What? Well, yeah, and then they so they would be when they're claimed dead, and now and then they don't have refrigeration to keep bodies cold, so they have to hurry up and bury these bodies. So they put them in these pine coffins, and then they have shallow graves out there. Mm-hmm. They only bury you like two or three feet underground and shit. And then, but you you would be awake. Like, a lot of times these people be awake, you know, the whole time, or they'd it's wake perilous. up during the thing, yeah. And then, so, like, you get to see yourself buried alive, and they usually have that little, that little window and shit, so you're, like, laying there, getting lowered in. But, uh, you you know, you'd wake, you come out of it, and the thing, you start freaking out, of course. And, like, a lot of times the, the, the person who was doing the spell to you would have come back, and, like, they would help, you know, help you get out or whatever. And then from there, you'd just be like in this, like, this trance. You'd, you'd be traumatized. You'd be in this trance. And then the drug's doing this thing. So they could, like, get you to do things and all that. But then, like, these people go back into town and stuff. And, of course, the the, the living relatives and everybody like, oh, shit. Like, he's yeah. come back from the dead, you know, and all this. But, like, the guy never died technically. He's yeah, like, his brain's just fucked now, though. Yeah, he's a different person. That's where that's that's the real story of the zombie. That's where the zombie comes from. That's the actual yeah. Real deal what thing. started all? Yeah. So that's uh. Yeah. Well, apparently it, I forgot the name of the thing, plant. Cause I it, forgot about the name of the plant, but yeah, it. Uh, I used to know the name of the plant. It's this white uh, flower. It is is actually a very beautiful flower. That's scary. Yeah. Yeah, so zombies are real. I know how I'm going to give me a wife. A what? What? <laughs> a nice hot wife. Ew, I'd never sleep with you. Really? Drink this. <laughs> you fuck me now, zombie bitch. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Stop. No means no. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your black friend T? <laughs> Fuck you, you whore. <laughs> oh man. Well, um, I'm gonna say this, and I'm not gonna say it in an ugly way at all, right? I'm gonna say something nice, okay? I want to say congratulations to our former uh, podcaster uh, Oscar for his new announcement that he that I see he's made. Congratulations for what? He's they're having a a little a lowercase O. He's the big O. Oh god. And Man, she, you know, she's gonna all I have to say o. is right now is like So it's gonna be like that. Fuck fuck Oscar right up the ass with a plunger right now. That's your friend, man. I'm, no, I'm getting you know what? Plunger, fuck man. that. Plunger, fuck that motherfucker. this is first kid, man. No, but don't no, fuck that. I'm not excited about it. You know what? He's been a piece of shit. Dick face. <laughs> <laughs> I love him to death, but you know what? He's been ignoring me lately, so fuck him. It's good. He's about to be a father, man. So what, that dude? So I'm not, I've been a father for seven fucking years. I didn't ignore a motherfucker when I found out I was a father. Like, no, I just been hitting him up lately. Like, no text me. And it's weird for him not to be that way. But I kind of think he's got a Yoko. He's got a Yoko. Yeah, man. Like, I'm, I was, I'm up here being nice, and you're like. Yeah, but yeah. well, that's what you get. You you hear me, Oscar? If you're listening see, to this shit, you fucking ignore me for the last time, motherfucker. I'm coming down there. See, see, I'm gonna teach your kid cuss words. And in the early days when he was being um, seduced away from the podcast, I was like, fuck, 
fuck you, Oscar. You piece of shit and all that. Then I calm down and like I'm trying to be. I'm like congratulations. No, I'm I'm half no. fucking guy and you're saying fuck. See, okay. that's that's why we can't never get shit done in this world, man. Oh well, it's what you get, Oscar. I put in time, man. We even scheduled a day to hang out. You blew me off. I'm coming for you, Oscar. I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I like I like this room, man. That we used to park in. I like that room, man. <laughs> fucking took the room away from us, you fucking dick. It was cold. Yeah, you know what? Fuck you, Couch Oscar. Couch was awesome. Fuck you, Oscar. This, you know what we're gonna name this episode? The fuck you again, Oscar. <laughs> Re fuck you. Re fuck you, Oscar. Times two. Fucking asshole. My head dead. But seriously, congratulations on the fuck you, but congratulations on the baby. You know, I hope the family's healthy, but fuck you, man. <laughs> oh, now that we got that out of our system. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah. See now, now I'm depressed again, man. Because now I'm thinking about that room. That was a cool room, man. It was, but and. It, but it's okay, cause we we learned a lot from the situation, and that's that we learned that we're a team, we're a duo, and we yeah. only, we only need us for the show. It's always nice to have extra people. Don't get me wrong; it's always cool to have a different mouth and different brain, you know, putting shit our way. But you know, at the end of the day, even when it's just me and you sitting here, man, shit's pretty dope. It is. Oh yeah, and one more thing, you know, cause Valentine's Day's coming up. I love you, Beth. Love you so much, babe. Fucking fag. Unbreak my heart. <laughs> Say you love me. <laughs> He's been practicing. <laughs> I've been practicing for you, Beth. You know what's funny? You want to hear something? Well, let's have a little Beth talk. You know, since you know I'm on the crazy Beth train. You want me to right help now. you out with her? No, no, no. I'm going to sing a song for her. Okay, do it. For you. <laughs> don't help you get in. If, no, you, no. if you warn no, no. her. Don't watch, you, watch out, man. I got this for you, dog. Don't you warn her to run away. No, man. She going <laughs> she gonna to be like... Oh, Drew, I just want to give it to you right now. <laughs> All right, you ready for this? Yeah. This is some old school shit, right? Every time I close my eyes, I wake up feeling so horny. I can't get you out of my mind. Section you be all I need. See, I can't sing like that R&B shit. I would give anything. Just to make you understand me. That was beautiful. I don't give a damn about nothing else. Freaking you is all I need. Tonight, I need your body. <laughs> That's beautiful, T. You gonna get some? She gonna give you some of that good yeah. old Oklahoma tang now, that, man. That, that was that was dedicated to you, man. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. I like to say I helped you out. You know what I'm saying? That was like the lube that got her ready for you. You know, no, 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 no. No, Beth is not that type of woman, okay? She's a saint. You, no, you give her lube, man. No spit, no spitting on the hand. No, she's a saint, okay? She's an awesome woman. There won't be no lube, okay? Because I'm awesome, okay? 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 Okay. <laughs> you brought lube? <laughs> All right. Alright, on to the next. Love you, Beth. Goodbye. Love you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> you almost had it, too. <laughs> I had just sung, sung it for and like, I know what she was thinking. She was like, oh my God, what the fuck am I hearing right now? But she started hearing the words and she was like, oh my God, he's right. P and G. <laughs> 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 all that and then you just love you I'm sorry no I'll do that. now she's panties up legs is closed and mama's going to bed <laughs> good she's in Oklahoma I don't want her to be like that but I'm not here oh I just got her all worked up for some uh, some big uh, Indian motherfucker up there now it's like oh Beth oh uh, me red man want white woman. <laughs> she's like half Filipino. Huh? She's half Filipino. Oh, she she's half Filipino? Yeah. They're going to make... You better watch out, man, because she's going to find some some muscle-bound uh, Native American dude up there, and they're going to get together, and they're going to have a baby, 
And that baby's gonna be Lou Diamond Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> And how you gonna? Re- how could I stop something or, like that? If That's- it's not Lou Diamond Phillips, the baby's gonna be Keanu Reeves. How are you gonna beat that? You better hurry up and get up there and, and stake your claim. No, see, you know how I'll beat it. It's because it'll never work. Yeah, well, I am one hundred percent awesome. I'm lying. I'm, I'm really shitty. You're right. She probably will never get with me. The thing is, is I love you, but don't leave me. <laughs> I just need a friend to flirt with over text, Drew. I, I didn't mean I'm anything hurting. for real. I'm hurting. I'm hurting for squirting, Drew. No. You know what though? I would totally marry her. That would be the one woman I would marry. Uh, I've never wanted to marry any other woman ever. But that'd be the one woman I'd be. Okay. But I mean, not right away. She couldn't just show up and be like, let's get married. And I'd be like, yeah. No, I'd be like, well, I hope we could date for a few years and really work it out. Like, And I would try. Like, I would put effort. Like, I would treat it like a legitimate Man, relationship. Man, I, I hope she's not, like, listening to this. Like, I don't care like, if she four is. four or five days from now. And she's, like, in this dark place. And she's like, oh, my God, where has my life gone now? Now Drew's talking about he wants to marry me. And she's like in the tub. It's like, I'm in the lowest point of my mm-hmm. life. She's like sitting in a, in a hot tub, slitting her wrist. Oh my God. And she's what? like, she's like, what? Pulling, she's pulling the radio into the tub. <laughs> <laughs> All cause, because I'm, I'm the only one that's nicer now. And, oh, and she yeah. wrote in her own blood on the bathroom tiles, not Drew, anybody but Drew. <laughs> wow. I could see that happening. She's like way out of my league. You but I totally think you got a chance though. She's way out of my league. She's a beautiful girl. Notice how I just said all that she, I hope she doesn't do all that, but like, I totally think you got a chance. Yeah, so it's what you do. You beat them down and you bring them back up. Yeah, it's like a 50 50, you know. But the good news is, thing, yeah. is, I think I really do. I might have a slight chance because I talked to her sister and, and she mentioned that uh, she had noticed that I had flirted with another girl online. On um, the Facebooks, and she had just kind of mentioned it to her sister. She's like, Drew, Beth got a little upset. <laughs> I was like, Yes! Okay. But that being said, right? Yeah. I had to say this. Uh huh. And what's her name again? Beth. Beth, Beth, don't take this like personal, personal, right? You just happen just to be the. the it's the my go- fault. I, go- I, I brought no, it up. No, no, no. You just happen to be the go to. Target right now that we're exploiting, right? But, alright, so let's say that that worst case scenario really did happen where she was in a hot tub <laughs> and she's cutting her wrist and she's pulling, you know, a plugged in radio into the tub at the same time while she's got a necktie around her neck <laughs> hanging from, you know, the, the, the shower rod, right? The curtain rod. Right, right. Like, she's doing everything to kill herself. And let's say she did, right? But it went horribly wrong. And all she did was, like, really, like, fry her nervous system and burn herself. And, like, halfway drown so now she can't breathe. She's basically, like, in this, like... She's, like, this shell of a person she used to be. You know what I'm saying? You know? Mm-hmm. Being fed through a tube. Gotta wear diapers and all that shit, right? Just extremely fucked up, right? If that were to happen... I would think that was so fucking awesome. <laughs> God damn, D. <laughs> I can't lie. I would be fucking so, impressed. So, I would be impressed. So I'm not saying I want on. her to do no, that. No, no, no. I'm not on. saying that. I'm taking, I'm taking this little finish. You're talking about the love of my life here. Okay. For one thing. I'm just saying. I, for think, what? For I just thing, think it would be a funny story. Yeah, okay. It would be another funny story for us to tell <laughs> No, that wouldn't be funny. I, you, dude, you know how heartbroken I would be? And exactly, not, that's what would make it so no, funny. No, because, not because, you know, oh, she didn't like me, but because she killed herself because of me. And that's what makes it even funnier. <laughs> it is. Now, right now, when we talk about it, it, it makes me even laugh talking about it. Do but I find, it, do I? But if it really happened... Maybe funny for you, not so funny for me. Look, okay, I'm not gonna say like, okay, 
I don't get pleasure from your pain. I think you do. <laughs> but I get a lot of entertainment from it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you really do. Come on now. Because like when Nicole, when Nicole left me, you were like... I was, I was supportive. Yeah, but you know what? I was the supportive friend. But, I was the most supportive friend but, that you had. And you, are, but you, you also have to admit that I handled that shit like a G. Like, hey, what I say? You, no, no, I, I, I was gonna. I, I, I did not bust your balls. No, but well, well, maybe okay, laugh. Busted, okay, I busted. Your yeah, ball. well, did I laugh at your pain? Yes. But it's okay. M- maybe, you, maybe a lot because you made me laugh at my pain too. That's one thing. That, exactly. I, See, that's I love the way about it works, you because man. when I was, I explained to you the story, you know, and, and definitely wasn't like a sad thing. I just explained to you what happened. It's like you got that, and you're just like, uh, you know, you make me really, really like grateful for my wife and family. <laughs> it's just like, fuck you, man. <laughs> Something positive came out of it. Yeah, that's true. You know, my life, I saw my life in a more positive light. You helped me, man. <laughs> You're welcome, D. Thanks, man. I just need for you to keep going through shit so I can feel better about myself, man. It's fucked up, D. <laughs> nah, okay, look. I'm not going to say, like, I'm a bully. No, I'm not a bully, but I am kind of a dick, man. And it's like, it's weird because it's like I either have like no feelings or I mean, I have a lot of feelings. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's almost like no middle ground. It's almost, some, it's not like manic depression. I'm not, I don't get like depressed and like real down and like, woe is me or like, you know, like, oh, I got to. I don't get like clinical depression or anything like that. I more or less get angry or whatever. I get kind of, I guess, bitter or I feel good. You know what I'm saying? It's just kind of like that. I don't have any middle ground. There's something wrong with me, man. Well, you see. I'm, I'm, it's because of all the kind of lingus when I was a I child. Think, I think it's because when you were a kid, you hung out at the Shady Groves and performed fellatiation for molasses jars and. <laughs> You just try to block it out and it just kind of fried you. No, I wasn't a fellatiator. Maybe I was mad because I was never fellatiator. <laughs> and I never got to kind of lying somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. Yeah, you know... I kind of look back now. I'm kind of pissed off about my childhood. Like, not now, not like in traditional pissed off ways, but like, I'm pissed off that I didn't get molested by some older chick when I was, you know, younger. I, it would have been like the best childhood ever, man. It was, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, it really was. I have to say, you no, know, I'm not just talking about just you, man. I'm talking about. Like, well, I mean, why I, can't I have that filthy experience? I mean, you know, I, I don't mean to gloat. To all the other people that were molested and it was terrible. But my, my experience was great. She she was gentle. She was nice. She let me and she let me you know like you know ride her horses and stuff. Mm-hmm. And and that's not a pun. You I mean, call them horses. Huh? That's not a pun. Like literally, like I'd help her you know clean the barn, feed the horses and shit, and she'd take me to the back and let me play with the titties. This sounds all the way sexual. The whole thing sounded sexual. That's awesome. That makes it, that makes it even better. Like she let me ride her horses. It gave me clean a, out the uh, stalls. Clean out the stalls. Uh mm-hmm. huh. Licking on the walls. Clean out the stalls. Hey, mm-hmm. when that ice cream truck came, she'd always buy me an ice cream. Not any of the other kids in the neighborhood. What kind of ice cream she get you though? Oh, dude, I'd always go for the fudge bomb. Okay, 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 okay. So she took the fudge bomb. Did she like the one with the banana flavor? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> banana foot. Did, did she? Dude, this just keeps getting sexual. Right. The in your windows. Yeah. Did she put that? Did she penetrate herself with the fudge bomb and then give it to you? And then so now you got like this nice mixture of, of sweat. The sweat. <laughs> <laughs> you go immediately to sweat. The slight tinge of uh, fish. <laughs> And then this all what what used to be this awesome fudge bomb, but now it's just 
<laughs> melted. It says melted. Dude, see, if you were more creative, you would have said she shoved the fudge bomb inside of her, and then you take the bag, and she'd just stand there and let it melt out into the bag and make me drink it with a straw. <laughs> you know what's fucked up? Is that you, if, if you think about it, like, guys were so fucking perverted, if that had happened, we'd be like, man, I just had the best fudge bomb in my life. <laughs> What, but, are you, what are you talking about? By next week, she'd be like halfway to being a millionaire from all the guys that paid her to do it. Right. But Imagine but, if the internet was but, back then. She'd but if, would be rich. But if it was some young young girl and it was an older guy and he like like took, <laughs> took his dick and dipped it in her gogurt. <laughs> <laughs> so, we would think he was the dirtiest son of a bitch there. <laughs> There's dick in my Goku. No, she never molested the ice cream. She would buy it because I'd. She told all the other kids that it's because I'd help her, you know, with the horses and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure it's because you know I was getting a little treat for. He was sucking on my titties. No, dude, it's the first vagina I ever felt. And she didn't let me like shove my fingers inside of her or anything like that. But she just like let me touch, let me touch her titty, and she like fill on me. I don't know what she got out of it. So when you touch, when you seen the pussy the first time, and you like little, you, you touch it like, God damn, bitch, it was like a war wound or something. That, were you in nine? Oh, did, you know, did, did you step on the trip wire? No, honestly, I didn't think anything crazy like that. And I always remember it. It gave me that excited sensation, but I didn't understand it. You know what I mean? I wasn't I wasn't matured enough mentally to understand what was going on. But like, I just, Why does that ugly motherfucker look so appealing? Oh, no, I didn't see it. It was more like, you know, she'd just like run her hand down there and let me like run across and feel it. And it was like, be so warm. She had a little bit of hair. It's just like warm. It's just like this exciting feeling would rush through my body and I could feel it even in my dick. And I didn't know what it was or why, but I just, it was good to me. I was just like, I liked it. But like I said, there was that side of me too that was just like, I probably shouldn't tell nobody. Because she was never the type of woman that was like, you know, don't tell nobody. Don't go tell your family. She just kind of let it be what it was. It made it even harder. Oh, dude. She, yeah. Oh, man. Dude. I, I hate I just, you. And I mean, she, when I say she had big titties, like she had like D's. D's. <laughs> Two big, big old D's. Big old D's. Yeah. Now you can't. She had a me. brother, Jr. He was kind of a weirdo too. He kind he of, watched. No, but he actually got in trouble for trying to touch one of the girls in the neighborhood. And oh, so it was like a family of molesters. I think so because it was a but, he, but they ended up kind of because he was a lot older, so they ended up kind of pushing him out. And see that that's do you think he was? It goes uh, to show things were different back then, though. Do you he, think he was uh, a diddling? Uh, <clears throat> Possibly. Oh, Double D Deborah. Who knows what was going on in the house? They were all kind of a little weird. You're all like, I wish I was her brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, he actually ended up getting pushed out. Like that's that's what I was about to say. It's kind of cool about how things were a little bit different back then. Like, you know, he he had got caught <laughs> trying to touch a little girl. You know, well, she wasn't little. She was probably like twelve. Well, she was, I guess, that's little. She was twelve. And he was fucking probably like 18, 19. And the the whole neighborhood just wouldn't fuck with him. Nobody talked to him. People run him off when he come walking up and shit to the point where he just left. He moved out and left. And so I was like... So I the neighbors didn't like burn him in the basement? Could be. He just and then he came back and started killing the kids on the street one by one in their dreams? That could have happened. But his name was JR, not Freddy. Uh huh. And then his sister was up in the bathtub. She was in the hot bathtub and she cut her wrist and pulled the radio into the tub at the same time. That could be possible. I haven't talked to her. And she was on her period. Why is that important? Why? It's because she was on her period and when she did that, the blood came out and she jumped up and she saw herself in the mirror and she said, Oh, Bloody Mary. <laughs> What the fuck, dude? I don't know, man. <laughs> I ain't got problems, dog. Happy Valentine's Day. I love you, Beth. I have problems, too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should just call this... Uh, I love you, man. Confessions. Or, like, problems. <laughs> Problem. Background. Problem noise. 
problem back. Fuck this. I'm like, I'm done, man. I'm I fucking. Think, yeah, I think we're 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 tongue, tongue twisting and shit. What's the time? What are we on? We're at a minute. A minute. Thirteen forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven. Okay, okay, okay. So we're at one hour. We're at almost an hour fifteen, basically. All right. Let's so see. we've gone over time. Let's well, we have gone on. It's not like we have like a set time. Well, let's wrap One of these days, we're gonna do a three-hour podcast. I'm down, but we'd have people. We're gonna do a three-hour podcast, and guess what? Probably nobody's ever gonna listen to it, but we're still gonna do it. Okay. Bitch, let's wrap it up, bitch. You got anything to say? I said, oh, bitch, bitch, bitch. Oh man, fuck it, man. We ain't got time limits. No, man. I got something else I gotta talk okay, about, fine. man. Right, fine, lay down. Yeah, man. You know what? Hmm. Man, I was me. telling you about. I was telling you about my my film class. Yeah. Man, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, fuck them Christian kids, man. Okay, <laughs> These little bastards. I'm tired of the Christian kids in class, man. <laughs> I'm about to make a petition. Every time I go sign for a class from now on, I'm like, hey, how many Christian kids are in that class? And they tell me, oh, there's, there's one. I'm like, okay, I could deal with that. But there's multiple ones. No, I don't want to do it. I know. I know. It's discrimination. It is. You're right. I don't give a fuck. Fuck y'all, man. Because them motherfuckers, man. Like, okay, so I'm taking this film class. And um, we had to choose movies for our personal projects, right? We had to do a research paper on it. And so we had to name what movie we want to do. And basically, we had to sell this to the class and all this other shit. But anyway, you know, name the director, the actors, you know, the important parts, you know, and what the movie means to us and shit. So I picked Quentin Tarantino's Death Proof, right? Mm-hmm. You know, because it's a fucking awesome movie, you know? And um, so everybody else is picking their movies, and one guy's like, I want End of Watch, but he wants to be a cop. Makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You want to get shot with Jake Gyllenhaal, you know, in the alleyway, and they hug each other when you die, or whatever, bitch, you know? So then. Okay, one lady, she's like in her 50s, right? She's this, this older black woman with the short, like, uh, Florida Evans haircut, right? Mm-hmm. Man, she comes in, they ask her uh, what movie she wants. She goes, I'm on Tombstone. I was like, whoa, Tombstone? Like, fuck yeah. I said, hey, she goes, what? I said, I'll be your Huckleberry. And she goes, you damn right. So I knew she, I was like, oh, man, Tombstone fucking name, man. You know, classic, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So these kids like picking the different movies, the little faggoty movies that they're picking, right? Most of them like these little what they call it, the Oscars. So I hear I'm in film, I don't even give a shit what the fucking awards thing. These Oscar nominated winners and all this. Anyway, this this one this this black kid who's next to me, I don't know. I think he's like a closeted gay. He reminds me. Just imagine if uh, Cleveland Junior was a Christian, right? <laughs> I just want to sit around and praise Jesus. <laughs> Pretty much. And he's just like, he's like, I- I'm going to pick uh, 12 Years a Slave. And everybody in there is like, oh, that was a really good movie. Oh, my God. You know. You're such um, a good person you know, for that. Yeah, type of thing. Oh, God. And I was sitting there. This is me, right? I go, man, fuck 12 Years a Slave. And they're like, what? I was like, man, fuck them damn slave movies, right? And he goes, well, it was either that or the pursuit of happiness with Will Smith. I was like, and everybody's like, oh my God, that was so inspirational. I was like, man, fuck Will Smith, man. I said, look, not really. I like Will Smith. Is he an awesome person? Yes, he is. But you know what? Fuck the pursuit of happiness and all that happy bullshit. You know, those inspirational movies, right? I said, look, why don't y'all just pick fun movies, right? I said, if you're going to pick a slave movie, I said, I'd rather pick something like Django Unchained. Because, and I say, as soon as I say because, I'm a white Christian kid, bust out with a, Django on Chance is a terrible movie. I For said, one, hell no, I was it wasn't. Like, what? He goes, I didn't like that story. I, didn't, I couldn't even finish it. It was just so terrible. I was like, how do you know it was terrible? Probably there's a bunch of white people I said, were dying. I said, how you going? <laughs> I said, how you going to call it terrible? You didn't even finish it. 
And then, then the girl next to him jumps on his bandwagon. Yeah, I didn't like it either. I know it's Tarantino, but you know, I just wasn't that good. And I was like, I don't know what the fuck y'all saw. I said, I don't know what I saw. Yeah, right? the movie was fucking amazing. And then, but everybody cuts me off, right? But I let it go. I let it go. And that was the last incident, right? But before, these little fuckers got, they pissed me off the, the two days before that because we come in, right? And uh, we, we were talking about the movie rating system. And I was saying, we, we had watched this movie. We had a show where, back in the 1950s, where there would have been things that were considered deemed inappropriate for that time period, right? And so, uh, at the end of the quiz, it says, what do you think about the current MPAA movie rating system? You know, G, PG-13, R, NC-17, and so on. And so... You, you pretty much, that's the one question you get to give your opinion on. So, uh, the teacher already knew me. She, she been my drama teacher last year. So she already knew what kind of person I was, right? Well, anyway, uh, she tells this one girl to read her, her answer. She says, I don't think that they do enough to censor movies. It's just ridiculous how these so-called PG-13 movies are getting away with all this more violence and more nudity and more cussing. And these kids are watching this and I can't believe that they're being influenced by this and it's just sad. And I think that if parents are going to let their kids watch these R-rated movies, that they shouldn't let them, they shouldn't be allowed to let them watch it in public. They should have to do it at home. And people, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So the teacher looks at me, she goes, D, what was your response? I didn't even hesitate. Nothing. I was waiting. I knew she was going to point at me. She goes, D, what did you think about it? I said, I think that's all bullshit. <laughs> that's just all I can say. It's like, the whole thing is bullshit. I said, you know, I said, my kids, I have an 18-year-old, I have a 14-year-old. They've been watching horror movies, cussing, violence, yeah. and everything since they were little bitty. They've seen every, pretty much every horror movie under the sun. We're big horror fans in my house. I said, but my kids, AB on roll students. Never get in trouble, never been arrested, never murdered anybody, you know. National Honor Society, you know, good kids and shit, you know, like I said, hell if anybody censors anybody, my kids my kids censor me on movies and music. You know, and so so people oh so then the little Christian kid, he decides to chime in, right? He says, Well, I work as an assistant Check this out. This is this is how retarded his so-called job is, right? He's an assistant substitute teacher. What? Yeah, that's like that's like okay. First off, I've never heard of an assistant substitute teacher, right? And if you're a substitute teacher and you need an assistant substitute teacher, how fucking much are you being paid to sub and shit? And how the fuck do you land a job as an assistant substitute teacher? What it sounds like he was saying is, is my dad donated a lot of money to the school, so they found a fucking job for me to do because I'm useless. I I would I would probably <laughs> believe that, but anyway, he says uh, it's ridiculous. These five and six year olds, they're quoting Twenty One Jump Street. That's right, Twenty One Jump Street. They're saying lines out there that is just terrible. I said uh, uh, they're they're quoting worse shit than that. Wait, wait, I'm like, wait we know that. Dude, I, I got video footage right now no, of a, of a four year old telling me a story about how he was in the car in the passenger seat and he flipped off a guy, called him the n word. The guy called him an asshole back. I got footage. I'll show it to you. I, we'll use it for another podcast. Okay, but. you don't. Do y'all look shocked about that? No, we're not. We're not shocked. But I can't you. believe he is. Like he must be very conditioned, like very like sheltered. Okay, so he says that right, and I say. I said, are you a Christian? Is it safe for me to assume you're a Christian? Yes, I'm very proud of one. I said, okay. And I said, well then, are you okay with kids quoting the Bible? Well, of course I am. I said, okay. So then it's cool for them to say, is it cool? They quote the part where it's okay to rape a girl as long as you pay her dad 50 shekels and two goats. <laughs> <laughs> so people start laughing. And about four or five Christian kids start yelling at me. You're misquoting that. You're taking that out of context. I was like, no, I'm not. It's there. How does it? How is it actually put? Okay, it, it says if 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 a man rapes a virgin. Rapes though it uses the rape. It says rape. Yeah, rape. So they didn't like sugarcoat it and use no, it. No, 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 no,
that he can go to the girl's father and for forgiveness and repentance, he can pay these 50 shekels, whatever that's worth. That, for all we know, that could be 20 grand in yeah. today's money, but he pay the girl's father 50 shekels and give him like two goats. And he's forgiven. He can be forgiven, but okay, it's going to get deeper and even more fucked up, right? He, he's forgiven and then the girl has to marry him. And he cannot divorce her because of that. Oh my God. That's the Bible, dude. How I, can I, you misquote that? I didn't misquote any of that. Right. That's, that's like, it's there. By rape, they meant consent. You're, you're taking it out of context. <laughs> okay. There's also a passage in there that says, if a woman is raped, right, and she doesn't yell loud enough that not only is the rapist to be stoned to death, but she's to be stoned to death too because she didn't yell loud enough. I'm dead serious. Fucked up. I'm dead serious. It's in the Bible. There you go, but don't don't you quote no 21 Jump Street. (laughs) So they got all pissed off and no, oh, you, oh, you, you misquoting it. I said, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. I was like, it's there. Like, I did not make that up. Like, I wish I had because it'd be a really. It's I, probably none of them's actually even read the Bible. No, obviously they've heard of this quote, but they, but they're trying to find a way to put a nice spin on right. it. Right. That's completely full of shit. Right. Because I've read it and I'm very well studied in it. It's like, no, it's it's pretty much there. And then, um, so I was like, I said, look, at the end of the day, you want to take the same, whatever your fucking standards are for for uh, censoring movies or putting ratings on them or restricting them from children and stuff. I said, let me tell you, if you take an hour and a half long movie, two hour long movie, and you put it through that system, and you take your fucking Bible, which is has way worse fucking stories that could happen than in these movies. If you take that shit and put it up against that same two-hour movie, most people would rather give that two-hour movie a PG-13 rating and give your fucking story from the Bible NC-17 rating. Yeah. You know, like, your own fucking Bible would not pass the same censorship test you're trying to put up against put these movies up against did you say that to them yes and they fucking pissed I can't believe it but I always end up running into these fucking kids you know what I'm saying like now last year when I was taking the acting class the little Christian kid he, he kind of didn't have a chance man and like I ended up offending him so bad me and this other guy we just and we would just like fuck with him but it wasn't even thing like we were like trying to pick on him but he would make it obvious. He's the one that would make it obvious. That, He'd bring oh, it on himself. Oh, oh my God. Uh, I can't believe that. You know, like, we'd say something. He'd act all uncomfortable. He'd make it extremely obvious. He'd go off his way to get attention with the shit. So, oh, okay. We would just kick it up a notch. You know what I'm saying? We would get dirtier and dirtier, gayer and gayer, like, just to just to get under his skin. Dude ended up quitting, like, after a month. Damn. <laughs> he, couldn't, he couldn't handle it. But this one, he's got backup, and I'm outnumbered by those fuckers, right? <laughs> like, it's, ah, round two. I'm losing round two so far, but I'm going to come back. But see, the teacher knew about my movie, and she asked me if I wanted to show it to the class. And at first, I felt like <clears throat> I was kind of embarrassed and kind of like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I felt like Ke- golly. I felt uh, Carrie's mom. In the background, they're all gonna laugh, laugh at, at you. you. And it's like, no, I don't want to show it. Okay, you can show it, but I'm gonna sit in the back of the room and face the wall because I don't want to watch it and I don't want to see y'all's reactions. Plug it up. I tur- Plug it up. I got all emo and shit, right? But then as soon as they start talking this rating shit and they start screaming there some of the movies that we're watching and shit, like they see two guys kissing or something, they get to oh acting all uncomfortable. Like, yeah, I'm definitely showing my fucking movie now. If it's not even, I don't even care about getting fucking compliments. I don't care like, oh, that's pretty good. You know, not bad for first time. You know, I don't care if somebody, I hope that guy says, 
I think your movie was shit. You know what I'm saying? Or if this could happen, everything's totally worth it. The whole thing was worth it. All the waiting, all the everything. If I can make this motherfucker feel uneasy and just kind of squirm around in the seat for about two seconds, just for two seconds, it would all be worth it, man. Yes. That's to that point. It's not no thing like, like, oh man, you feel comfortable showing comfortable motherfucker. Yeah, I'm gonna make y'all watch this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I don't get I, I flat out don't give a fuck, man. And that's all it took. That's fuck all it yeah. took. Fuck yeah. For this fucking Christian kid to piss me off. Like, you know what? Now, yeah, you know what? I hope when when y'all watch this, I hope I finish sensibilities. I hope you feel like. What the fuck did I just watch? That's exactly what I want you to feel. Or I want you to feel like, what the fuck is wrong with that weirdo over there? Yes. You know what I'm saying? If that's where they feel, oh my God, I'm probably going to bust a nut and take a shit and shoot myself at all at the same time because, hey, I might as well go out with a bang. Fuck yeah. Guns blazing. Fucking asshole. Tell me Django on chain suck, motherfucker. I'll show you. Fuck yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's, the game is different now. I'm not even looking for fucking fans anymore. I just want to offend your fucking sensibilities, you fucking assholes. Cheers to offending, offending people. Cheers to that shit. That's right. And that's why the name of my motherfucking production company is Unappropriate Films. That's right. Not inappropriate. Fucking retarded ass word. Inappropriate. Everybody inappropriate. Mm-mm. I turn it on his back. I said, unappropriate, you motherfucking bitch. Boom. You know why? Because I know it's not a real word. But you know what the fuck I mean when I say it. So suck my dick, you goddamn cocksucker. All right, we're done. Man. Let's wrap this bitch up. That shit man. was beautiful. All right. I got a new sign out. It's a little bit shorter, but I think the words are powerful. Mm. Don't be a sheep, but also don't be a wolf in sheep clothing. Just be a wolf. That's beautiful. It really is. Thank you. Um, Marilyn Monroe was a fine bitch. She killed Lou Gehrig and both the Kennedy brothers. So stay that fine bitch pussy. Get you some regular pussy. We're over. We're out. Fuck you, Christian boy. Big butt dicks, motherfucker. I hope you squirm, you little bitch. He said, smoke up, Tony. It's great.